हेलो माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर सी डी कढ़वाने फ्रॉम के के वाघ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च नासिक महाराष्ट्र स्टेट इंडिया इन टुडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द डिजाइन ऑफ बीम कॉलम बेसिकली वी स्टडी फर्स्ट व्हाट इज मीन बाय बीम कॉलम्स एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट मेंबर्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस थ्री स्ट्रक्चर एज अ बीम कॉलम्स एंड हाउ टू एनालाइज द लोड्स एंड मोमेंट्स एक्टिंग ऑन बीम कॉलम सो व्हाट इज बीम कॉलम फर्स्ट A beam column is a structural element subjected to combined flexural moments and axial loads are called a beam column. That, that means, look at this two-story industrial or any multi-story structure. In this, these are vertical members are columns and they are uh, they are provided with the bracings at the ground floor. Now, whenever lateral wind loads are acting at point A and C, similarly, these columns are subjected to the gravity load downward in downward direction. and lateral wind loads are acting that means these columns are subjected to axial load as well as bending moment therefore this column is called as a beam column for examples columns and beams in rigid frames as they will be subjected to axial force and bending moment top cord members of trusses in case of top cord member of trusses they are called as rafters when we keep purling in between the joints on the rafters then the rafters will be subjected to axial forces as well as bending moment that means rafter will become a beam column when we keep purling in between the joints of the rafters next bending moment in column due to eccentric loads so look at this this is a top view of a column and these are the number of beams coming from from the uh, four directions when the reaction from a and c beams are equal so there is no bending moment of minor axis similarly if bending moment sorry uh, if a uh, reaction from b uh, beam and d beam are equal again there will be no bending moment about major axis if the reactions are transferred same then there is no possibility of a bending moment but in the in this type of column or in case of corner column if you look at this is i section this is a top view of column this is one direction beam connecting to the column this is another direction beam connected to the column Now in this case, due to reaction of a beam transferred to the column, so there is a bending moment of the z-axis. And when whenever reaction A is transferred, reaction A is transferred to the column, so there is a bending moment of the minor axis. Similar is the case in this case also. In this case, suppose reaction from A and C beams are equal, so there is no possibility of bending moment of the minor axis. But if in this case there is only one beam is coming from this direction B, that means there is only one reaction coming. Now uh, from B R B that means this column is subjected to bending moment about major axis that is Z Z axis and that's why this column is not a pure axial axial loaded column all these column one two and three these are nothing but uh, they will be a beam column if reactions are not same and they are producing axial force as well as bending moment. Next, bending moment of columns in a brace frames. In case of brace frames, what happens due to lateral loads? Columns bend in a double curvature like a shape S. That means in here this is prohibited from swaying out. Similarly, here this is connected by means of bracing, so these ends are prohibited from movement. That means here there is a shape S will form due to this bracing. And that's why the shape is nothing but a double curvature shape. so single and double curvature bending so in case of analysis of beam uh, columns we have to understand the two concept that is single curvature and double curvature single curvature means in this case we see whenever a axial load is acting and two opposite bending moments this this type of bending moment and m1 is acting here and m2 is acting here so this due to these bending moments actually these are the similar bending moment acting equal bending moment acting at the two ends therefore the column bends in a shape of s that is called a double curvature so bending moment diagram is like this whenever any column is subjected to eccentric load e eccentric load at a distance e then in this case bending moment diagram is any form but whenever any industrial column or multi story building column is subjected to vertical axial load at the same time horizontal wind load or lateral wind load therefore the bending moment diagram is like this here again uh, there is a two points of contra flexure so again this is a or you can say uh this is a 
see, this is actually a single curvature bending because this bends in one direction only but again here negative is that means again double curvature bending so there are two concepts one is single curvature and another double curvature so based on single curvature bending and double curvature bending we have to consider the design parameters next one behavior of beam column versus beam column now if if you look at curves number one number one number two and number three all these curves are for beam column that means this this curve number one curve number two and curve number three are the different stages here is elastic lateral torsional buckling so before uh, whenever uh, column is subjected to external load and uh, column is having a elastic lateral torsional buckling before the load reaches to the yield point here in this case when the load reaches in elastic lateral loss of buckling when load reaches to the yield point and then there is a in elastic lateral torsional buckling so there is a curve this is a curve for that and this c curve is again this is a plastic lateral torsional buckling you can say so these curves are for beam column but if you look at the curve number four that is linear plastic sorry in linear elastic beam p is equal to zero when there is no axial load on a member only bending moment is acting so this is the type of curve that means there is a less deflection and it carries more you can say it carries more bending moment and less deflection as soon as a column is subjected to bending moment what happens here whenever axial load is a zero Core number five, axial load load, load P is zero. This is called as elastic plastic beam. Means whenever axial load is zero, but whenever beam passes through the elastic to plastic region, then its behavior is like this, and it reaches to the MP at this point. Similarly, core number six. Curve number six is a rigid plastic beam. P is equal to zero. When axial load is zero, but that, that is a, a rigid plastic beam so this is a curve for uh, rigid plastic beam then curve number seven this is a curve number seven that is elastic buckling column m is equal to zero whenever bending moment is zero whenever bending moment is zero then the, this curve is elastic buckling column m zero so bending moment is zero in this case so here there is a continuous increase of theta or deflection as the load go on increases seven eight number eight elastic interaction between bending and buckling so whenever there is a uh, good proportion of bending and buckling so behavior of column is uh, the curve number eight which is a dark dash curve this curve is eight so this is elastic interaction between bending and buckling so this is the elastic nature of a beam buckling and bending of a beam column now behavior of slender beam columns behavior may be classified into following five cases case one a short beam column subjected to axial load and any axial bending moment either axis or biaxial bending failure occurs when the plastic capacity of the section is reached with the limitation is set in the case case two similarly the behavior of beam column Similarly, the behavior of beam column uh, for case two, a slender beam column. Look at this diagram first. In this beam column, uh, the bending moment is acting about a z z axis, that is a major axis. The column is subject to major axis, and plastic is formed at the top. Here, there is a lateral restraint provided at the center of the column from the y direction. So, slender beam column subjected to axial load and any axial bending. Axial load and axial bending about major axis Z Z. If the beam column is supported laterally against buckling about the minor axis Z Y Y out of the plane bending, the beam column fails by buckling about Z Z. That means in this direction, in this direction, and in the direction both directions supports are provided at the center. That's why this column will buckle about Z Z axis first. Okay, so the beam column fails by buckling about Z Z. Interaction between column buckling and simple uniaxial. So here there is only one bending moment about uh, uh, z axis. That's why it's called a uniaxial bending moment. And column buckling. If the co beam column is very slender, if the beam column is very, nice. if the beam column is not very slender, a plastic hinge forms at the end or point of maximum moment. 
so if this beam column is not very slender then plastic hinge is formed at the top end of the point of maximum bending so at this point maximum bending will take place and therefore plastic hinge will form similarly case 3 is now whenever beam column is subjected to axial load and any axial bending moment about minor now whenever bending moment is acting about minor axis why why correct now there is no need for lateral support because uh, the beam column is subjected to bending about minor axis so there is no possibility of bending about major axis because it will, it will naturally fail about a minor axis because minor axis is a uh, the which is carrying less load and less bending so now there is no need for lateral support and no buckling out of the plane of bending the beam column fails by buckling about the y y axis so here the interaction between column buckling and simple uniaxial bending at very low axial loads the beam column will attain the bending capacity about y axis so the so bending capacity of a beam column about minor axis is very low because we know load carrying capacity or bending moment carrying capacity about y axis is less similarly case 4 so whenever beam column subjected to axial load and bending about major axis z z major axis z z and not restrained out of the plane of the bending means whenever it is subjected to bending about major axis but now it is not restrained about uh, the minor axis bending in this case what happens the column beam column fails due to combination of column buckling about y y buckling about buckling about y y axis and lateral torsional buckling the beam column fails by twisting as well as deflecting in ZZ and YY planes. Case 5. Whenever beam column is subjected to axial load and biaxial bending, this beam column is subjected to axial load P, at the same time it is subjected to bending about major axis ZZ, minor axis YY, then in that case, and again in this case there is no lateral support. So both axis bending moment is acting, axial load is acting. The ultimate behavior of the beam column is complicated by the effect of plastification, moment magnification and lateral torsional buckling. The failure will be similar to case number 4 but minor axis buckling will dominate. See here, minor axis will buckle first initially and then it may twist towards a major axis or it may directly fail about minor axis depending on the length of the column, the geometrical uh, features of the column then all the moment of inertia radius of gyration and type of section so moment of amplitude so basic thing is in this case beam column that as the bending moment is acting so there is ampl moment ap amplification so when there is a large axial load axial load produces moment due to any element deformation so that is called as a moment so final bending moment m is the sum of the original moment and the moment due to axial load the moment is therefore said to be amplified. The linear analysis does not take into account the displaced geometry, hence iterative second order methods should be used to find deflections and secondary moments produced by the axial load. Next, second order methods are impractical for practical for manual calculations, though they may be implemented with the use of software program. Hence, most codes, including the IS code, permit the use of either a second order analysis or the moment amplification method. Using this method, the bending moment calculated using linear or first order method is amplified by multiplying with the moment amplification factor of the form in bracket 1 whole divided by another bracket 1 minus PU divided by PCR bracket computer rectangle bracket computer to account for the secondary moment PCR is equal to Euler buckling load. Now second order moments in a beam column. Let us study what is mean by second order moments in a beam column. The second order moments may be due to number one let us take an example of this is a beam supported at one point like this and hinge support at one point and roller support at other point and now in this case the P delta effects also called as member effects will take place so this is the beam case of a beam whereas p delta effects also called structure See, whenever there is a structure this is a beam so for beam p delta effects and this is called as member effects where in case of structure these are two columns and 
uh, horizontal beam and vertical gravity loads are acting and horizontal wind pressure is acting at this joint. So P delta effects, P delta effects also called as structure effects will take place. So here this column is subjected to axial load as well as bending moment. In this case, this beam is subjected to axial load as well as bending moment MA and MB. So this is called as member effects in the beam. This is called as a structure effects. This is called as structure effects in the structure. Equivalent moment factor CM. So while designing of a beam column, we have to consider the equivalent moment factor CM depending on magnitude and nature of bending moment acting at the either end of a beam column. So let us look at the first unequal end moments. Whenever a beam column is subjected to unequal moments MA and MB. In this case MB is greater and MA is a lesser. So MA is a lesser bending moment, MA is a higher bending moment. In this case you have to find out M equivalent bending moment that is nothing but a average of MA and MB. In this case M equivalent will be equal to average of MA and MB. Whereas in case of equivalent end moments, if you want to find out equivalent end moments, when moments are same. So in this case, in this beam column, it is subjected to same bending moment but in opposite directions. Okay. So in this case, the bending moment diagram will be finally like this. Therefore, here M equivalent will be equal to CM into MB, where CM into MB where CM is a coefficient which accounts for the shape of the moment diagram. Shape of the moment diagram. So here in this case, M equivalent equal to CM into MB. So MB is nothing but a bending moment at which is acting at A and B. Next one, CM for brace frames. CM for brace, brace and no transverse loads. CM for brace frames and no transverse loads. CM is taken as no transverse loads. CM is taken as or CM is equal to 0.6 minus 0.4 in bracket M1 divided by M2. Whereas M1 is absolute smallest end moments, M2 is absolute largest end moments. So when you look at these bending moment diagrams, you will find that there is a negative M1 and M2. These are both are negative M1 and M2. Whereas here this is a positive M1 and M2 when there is a S curvature, double curve for a double curvature, the ratio M1 and M2 is taken as positive. For a single curvature bending, the ratio M1 and M2 taken as uh, negative. Now CM for brace frames continue now. CM for brace frames and no transverse loads. Actually, in this is the case, there is a correction here. This is the case with CM for brace frame and as well as there is a lateral loads. Here there is a presence of lateral loads. Therefore, CM is found out or CM is equal to 1 plus psi into bracket A into PR upon PE1, where psi is equal to pi square delta O EI upon MO L square minus 1. Conservatively, CM is equal to 1 in this case. So, conservatively, this uh, value uh, CM may be taken as 1. Now interaction equation. So uh, as from this preceding or uh, from the discussion, we must have understood, we, you must have understood that whenever beam column is there, it is subjected to axial load as well as a bending moment. That means we must have a interaction equation between the actual axial loads and design axial strength, actual bending moment and design bending moment capacity or bending strength of the section should be known and from that you can have interaction equation. Therefore, the relationship between the required and available strength is often expressed as required strength divided by available strength less than equal to 1. For compression members, the strains are axial forces and hence the expression is written as PU upon PN less than equal to 1. So here P is the required axial strength, factored axial force, P is a factored axial force where Pn or you can consider as a PD, available axial strength or design axial strength. Sometimes this is taken as uh, Pu upon Pd. So Pu upon Pd should be less than or equal to 1. Now, now let us look at what is the interaction equation. When more than one type of resistance is involved means whenever beam column is subjected to axial load at the same time it is subjected to bending moment at minor axis or it is also subjected to bending moment at a time on both axis that is 
minor axis and major axis then in that case the interaction equation is pu upon pn plus muz upon mnz plus muy upon mny less than equal to 1 where pu muz and muy are the axial force and bending moments allowing for the p delta and p delta effects in the beam column pn mnz and mny are the corresponding axial and bending moment capacities of the member so now we'll look at the graphical representation of interaction equations so we have seen an interaction equation for p bending moment of major axis and bending moment of minor axis so actual interaction is like this graphically the interaction is like this so here mu y upon mny mu z upon mnz is plotted p u upon p n is plotted and this shape is like this but it is simplified and it is taken as a straight line in all directions so here the equation becomes like this all these lines all these straight lines are represented by different interactions so the interaction between axial and corresponding bending moment about the corresponding axis so this is a simplified interaction equation which is a which gives you a conservative design so therefore indian code is 800 2007 provisions are there for the design of beam column the Indian code provisions are based on the Euro code 3 provisions and requires the following two checks. So uh, this is basically the IS 800 2007 provision for beam column is based on Euro code 3. So while designing a beam column we have to give two checks or you have to provide two checks local capacity check and overall buckling check. So in our syllabus we all uh, the checks are limited to only section strength ones. that means we have to check only section strength okay so therefore local capacity that means we have to check only local capacity check or we have to verify the section for local capacity the following interaction equation should be satisfied that is my upon mndy bracket raised to alpha 1 plus mz upon mndz whole bracket raised to alpha 2 less than equal to 1 where my mz factored applied moments about the minor and major axis of the cross section respectively MNDY and MNDZ design reduced flexural strain under combined and axial force in the respective inaxial moment acting alone. All these uh, different sections are provided here. The alpha 1 values are mentioned here, alpha 2 when mentioned, and this information is taken from IS 800-2007. So you can refer this uh, from the IS 800-2007 for different section how alpha 1 will vary and alpha 2 will vary accordingly the values of alpha 1 or alpha 2 are put in this equation and this equation's value of this equation should be always less than 1 if the value exceeds greater than 1 that means we have to increase the size of sections for the beam column so that is that is it uh, for the theory of beam column and how the beam column is analyzed by using is 800.7 that is the end of uh, this lecture thank you very much for listening this lecture thank you very much once again